It's time for another episode of What's the Deal With? All right, so what's the deal with unit fractions? You're probably wondering. You keep hearing me say copies of. Why copies of? All right, so I want to break down why unit fractions are awesome and why we continue to push this idea on you when it seems like it's a little foreign. Okay, so here's what I want you to think about. I want you to think about if I was comparing these two fractions and I asked you which one was larger, 4 sevenths or 4 thirteenths. Now you might be tempted to grab your calculator and hurry and convert them into a decimal. However, when we think in terms of unit fractions, it's actually pretty easy to do mentally. Let me show you how to think of these in terms of unit fractions. So 4 sevenths is the same as, remember, when we say unit fractions, we're thinking about any fraction where it's 1 over b. And literally, we say 1 over b, and you'll see that in the Common Core Standards, because it's saying that there's 1 in the numerator, and then b is whatever the denominator is, OK? So in this case, when I think about 4 sevenths, my b is going to be sevenths, right? So the unit fraction would be 1 seventh. So now what I want you to envision is I want you to think about slices of pizza. When I have uh, slices that were 1 7th, and I know 7 would be hard to cut a pizza in. Give me some grace here, okay? It could be a rectangle. Um, when I think about the unit fraction being 7 I can literally think of this as 4 copies of 1 7 the unit fraction is this guy right here, that 1 7th, that would be the unit fraction. Again, sometimes I tell students, think of this in terms of slices of pizza. So 4 slices of 1 7th is a good way to think about it. Okay, now let's go to that 4 thirteenths. Again, I want you to think about what would the unit fraction be in thirteenths? Hopefully you said 1 13th, that would be the unit fraction. So again, I know that my numerator tells me the number of slices or copies of that unit fraction. So 4 13ths is really 4 copies of 1 13th. Again, the unit fraction being 1 13th. Now what I want you to do is I want you to think about the unit fractions just by themselves. If you had two pizzas, both the same size, you cut one into seven pieces, and you cut one into 13 pieces, and you're really hungry. Which slices do you want? Probably want a seventh, right? Because a seventh is going to give you more pizza. This 13 was cut into slices that were smaller, right? So when I'm thinking of four copies of 1 7th or four slices of 1 7th versus four copies of 1 13th or four slices of 1 13th, I can easily see that this four copies of 1 7th or four 7th is going to be larger than that four 13ths. Now let's talk about why unit fractions are so powerful. When you think about your understanding of whole numbers, we don't have nearly the gaps that occur when we're comparing, say, 127 and 232. It's very easy to see that 232 is larger. That's because we're dealing in whole numbers, right? When we're in fraction land, we're dealing with things that are less than a whole or part of a whole. And so then it starts getting confusing as to, well, how much of the whole is this fraction and which one's larger? Is this fraction that has the denominator of 13 larger than the sevenths? And it, it gets confusing, right? The beauty of unit fractions is when I talk about four copies of 1 seventh, notice that I'm going back to whole numbers. I'm dealing in terms of whole copies. And really, if I use another example, so many times students are tempted just to add the numerators and add the denominators. So you would get 4 tenths. When I think in terms of unit fractions, though, I'm thinking of this as I have one copy of a fifth plus three copies of one fifth. Well, I have four copies of one fifth. I'm literally being able to relate fractions back to whole numbers, something that I'm already familiar with. This is why unit fractions are so powerful. I want to really challenge you to find math in your everyday life and use unit fractions and see if you can do more mental fractions. I bet you you can. Think about in terms of a recipe. If I have 3 fourths and I need to cut it in half, that might be really difficult, right? However, when I think of it as 3 copies of 1 fourth, I'm literally going to take my fourth cup measure, put in one copy, 
and then fill it up halfway, right? And it's really easy for me to say, well, I know what half of three is, I just don't know what half of three fourths is. This is why unit fractions can be so amazing. You will notice that in many assignments, we want you to continue to go back to the unit fractions. Push yourself. I know this doesn't feel normal to you, but I promise you it's amazing once you unlock the power of unit fractions. I hope you found this video helpful and you now know what's the deal with unit fractions.